We've been given the new 24 inch iMac a ton of attention recently because of how much value it packs for $1,300. Like the new modern design that'll look great in any room or office, the insanely high quality 4.5K display, the unbelievably thin chassis, the high quality peripherals, and of course, the power and reliability of the new M1 chip. However, even with all of that, the M1 MacBook Air might actually give you more value because you get that M1 chip at a lower price, currently only $950 on Amazon if you use the link below. This creates a problem because each of these M1 Macs have their own advantages and disadvantages, so it's pretty hard to figure out which one truly gives you more value, and that's exactly what I'm gonna answer in this video by digging deep into everything including the design, portability, specs, and performance, so let's get right into it. Starting off with the design, the M1 MacBook Air has the same one that it's had ever since the 20. 18 redesign, which came with Intel chips. In fact, when Apple released the M1 Air, the only thing they did was replace the Intel chip with the M1 chip, and I think they did that to make a statement showing how big of a difference just one chip can make. But then, if you look at the new 24-inch iMac, it gets a brand new design that basically seems impossibly thin for an all-in-one computer with that amount of power packed into it. And with that, it looks incredibly clean, modern, and up-to-date, because we know that the last time Apple changed the iMac's design, it stayed the same for basically the next 10 years. So if you buy this 24-inch iMac right now, you don't have to worry about the design getting outdated anytime soon. But with the M1 MacBook Air, you're stuck with the design from 2018. And based on recent leaks and rumors, there's a pretty good chance that the Air is getting redesigned within the next year, which might make this M1 Air start to feel a bit outdated. But don't get me wrong, the current design is great and it looks amazing. And I expect this M1 Air to continue to be sold alongside the new redesigned model when it comes out. And now now moving on to the ports, they both actually get the same two Thunderbolt ports if you're comparing the base models, which can definitely be limiting for those who want more, but with the iMac, you do have the option of paying $200 more for the mid-tier model to get an extra two regular USB-C ports, which is a nice addition. On top of that, that extra cache also gets you an 8-core GPU instead of 7, it gets you an Ethernet port built into the power brick, it gets you Touch ID built into the Magic Keyboard, and surprisingly, it even gets you a better cooling system with two fans and a heat pipe, which we showed off in our full comparison video, which you should definitely check out if you haven't already. So the nice thing with the iMac is that you can pay a little bit of extra cash and get some nice upgrades compared to the M1 MacBook Air, which only allows you to upgrade to an 8-core GPU if you pay more. So you don't even have the opportunity to get more than those two ports. So yes, that seems like a bummer, but keep in mind that even if you pay extra and buy the $1,500 24-inch iMac, you're still stuck with the same M1 chip that comes on the M1 MacBook Air for only $1,000 or $950 if you're buying it on sale on Amazon using the link below. So because of that, the M1 MacBook Air is definitely the better value Mac if you're just looking at performance by itself. Even though the Air is completely fanless compared to the 24-inch iMac, which at least comes with one fan on the base model, the performance isn't that far off considering the difference in size and price. So you're definitely getting some good bang for the buck, but keep in mind that if you pay extra for the $1,500 iMac, you're gonna get much better cooling performance, which will lead to even better performance, which is a plus. And on top of all of that, the 24-inch iMac also has some other advantages over the air, so let's go ahead and go through all of them. The main one is the 24-inch display because it's obviously much larger, allowing you to do things that aren't as convenient on a smaller 13-inch display. Play. For example, Max took the M1 MacBook Air with him on vacation to Hawaii so he could edit some of the photos that he took there, and he said that the display was really hard to edit photos on because he's used to much larger displays. On top of the fact that the controls in Lightroom take up a lot of space on the screen, so he definitely wouldn't want to edit photos full time on the MacBook Air. But with a 24 inch iMac display, it's a lot easier, and on top of that, you're working with a very sharp 
4.5K resolution instead of 2.5K on the Air, which can help you make more fine-tuned edits, especially if you're working with large resolution images. And one thing to note is that the IMAX display can get brighter with up to 500 nits instead of 400 on the MacBook Air. On top of that, with the larger 24-inch display, it's much easier to multitask at the same time by having multiple windows open side by side, which isn't as convenient on the small 13-inch MacBook Air display. And then going even further, the iMac has even more advantages like having better and louder speakers than the Air, having a nice 1080p webcam compared to 720p, and having better quality microphones as well. And of course, you have a wide variety of color options with the iMac, whereas the MacBook Air is limited to more subtle colors like space gray, silver, and gold. So you can see how the 24-inch iMac definitely has a few advantages over the Air, but there's one very important thing that the MacBook has that basically changes the entire comparison, and that is portability. Unlike the iMac, you can actually take the MacBook Air anywhere, and that greatly improves improves its value since you can now take it to a coffee shop to get some work done or even take it with you on vacation. And because of that portability, I'd say that the MacBook Air is going to hold its value better than the iMac because there are much more people in the market for a portable laptop compared to a desktop computer for the same obvious reasons that I already mentioned. So if you're thinking about reselling your Mac in a year or two, the MacBook Air is going to be much easier to resell and you'll probably Probably lose the least amount of money in the process. And for those of you who really want a desktop setup as well, you can buy an external monitor for the MacBook Air to use at home. But keep in mind that if you want one nearly as good as the 24-inch IMAX 4.5K display, you could be paying up to $700 for the display alone, which is the price of LG's 4K ultra-fine display, which still doesn't quite match up. And keep in mind that those monitors definitely won't look quite as clean and premium as the all-aluminum 24-inch iMac with its new modern redesign. And that's the beauty of the 24-inch iMac, since you really get a lot of features and value packed into that $1,300 price tag. And for some use cases, the iMac setup just makes more sense. For example, if you want a computer that your entire family can access, the iMac is perfect, since you can have multiple users that log in by simply using the Touch ID button on the Magic Keyboard. And if you have young children or teens, you can set up the iMac in a central living room or office location where you can more easily monitor what they're doing online compared to a MacBook which will be used privately in a room. So with all of that said, there are definitely good arguments for both the iMac and the MacBook, but if we just generalize it and try to figure out which one is the best value Mac in 2021, I would 100% say that it is is the M1 MacBook Air because of two reasons, the lower $1,000 or $950 price tag, and of course, the huge benefit of portability, which is much more convenient and it's gonna help the resale value for the future. If you totally disagree with me, go ahead and comment your thoughts below, but if you enjoyed this video, click that circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Definitely check out one of those two right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.